Hi there, good morning everybody. It's great to be with you in your living rooms or wherever you're watching this. Um, my name's Mike, uh, if I haven't met you before. I'm the vicar of the Lantern Church. I uh, work alongside Chris um, every week and it's a joy to do so. And it's a joy to be with you this morning as we continue in our series based on Pete Gregg's book, um, How to Pray. I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. Uh, over the last uh, couple of weeks, you've probably been introduced uh, to the acronym that he's using a lot in this, of uh, P-R-A-Y, nice and easy to remember, pray, P-R-A-Y, uh, pause, rejoice, ask, yield. Uh, well done if you've already memorised that. And um, it's a way of holding our prayers every day. Uh, perhaps you've been finding that on the Lectio 365 app, which you can download. Um, uh, it's also a way of um, uh, holding the whole of the Lord's Prayer, understanding the whole of the Lord's, Lord's Prayer. And as we go through uh, the last couple of weeks and the coming weeks, uh, we'll see the power of that as it helps give a structure to what we reflect on. Uh, today, we're looking at that R. Rejoice. So we pause, you know, give space and time for prayer, and then we rejoice. We begin with worship. And it's how Jesus tells us to begin. And it's really powerful. And it's really important. And this is why. You see, over the last few months, if you hadn't noticed, the world has gone a bit nuts. It needs a bit of a reset, I think. And it's like um, our perspective has shrunk down um, uh, on all sorts of things, in all sorts of ways. Our social life, perhaps you're not seeing as many people as you'd like to. Um, our news, you turn on the news, all you hear about is coronavirus or maybe the American presidential election. It's like everything has shrunk down and our perspective has been distorted or shift and shifted. And we need a, a, a reset to get our eyes, to fix our eyes on the most important things and truths. And you see, that's the power of these eight simple words at the start of the Lord's Prayer. We rejoice to reset. Say it with me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed, worshipped, honoured be your name. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Those simple eight words are the most powerful reset for our souls. You see, they, they lift our eyes from the ordinary to the extraordinary, from the mundane and the monotonous to the glorious, the eternal truths of our faith. They warm our hearts because we're reminded again that we have a father in heaven who is good and who loves us, who loves you. And our faith is challenged and stirred to hold on to him in difficult times because we are reminded that he is holy, he is hallowed, that he is on the throne of heaven, that he's the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the Alpha and the Omega. You see, we rejoice to reset and we can do this anytime anywhere anytime we say the lord's prayer we don't have to be in church we'll be able to sing we can rejoice to reset our father in heaven hallowed be your name i don't know if uh, uh you like me have uh, ever needed like a holiday to reset. Last week I went away for four days with my wife to Cornwall and as we took in some of those beautiful views it was like our souls went oh. it's like our perspective was shifted back to true north. Everything was put back in its right and proper place. Perhaps the first time if you're a parent that you held your child put everything in its place. Perhaps the fragility of our lives, our mortality in this season has been put into sharp focus for you and that's put some things in perspective, maybe in slightly uncomfortable ways. Well, these words at the start of the Lord's Prayer are the ultimate reset for our perspective on all things. They change everything about how we pray as well. Have a, have a think about it. If you... um. If you're acknowledging, reflecting on your good, good father in heaven and his power, because he's in heaven, his holiness, then it, it changes how you ask for things, doesn't it? He wants to be with you. He's your good heavenly father. He already knows all that you need. He loves to give his children good gifts. Why wouldn't you want to hang out with him? Why wouldn't you want to talk to him? Why wouldn't you want to ask him for stuff, knowing his goodness and his power to deliver on what you ask? 
as you spend any time in the presence of God, like that famous passage from Isaiah chapter 6, you'll be drawn to your knees in confession because of the holiness, the hallowedness of God. It will help you confess more wholeheartedly to begin like this in prayer, to rejoice, to reset. As you move on, it might help you handle with resilience and grace unanswered prayer because you can be okay not knowing everything or why God's doing X, Y or Z. You can hold on to the fact that he is sovereign in heaven and that he is good and will walk through you, with you, through the tough times. You see, it helps us with unanswered prayer. I'll come to look at that more later. It helps us to yield to God. Because if we know he's good and for us, and we know that all things are in his hands, it helps us submit to him. You see, it's such a powerful way to start out in prayer, isn't it? And to reset our perspective, whatever we're facing and in all things. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. And so this week, even if it's it's not easy, and it's not easy at this time when we, we, we all love to be meeting together, uh, munching into a sausage if you come to breakfast at nine, worshipping together without face masks or anything else. We'd all love that. And the picture in our Bible reading from Acts of this vibrant early church praising God in the temple courts and in their homes, showing fellowship, loads of the things that we can't do. And we're frustrated by that in this time. But But you know what? There's opportunity in that as well. Sometimes praise isn't always easy. Uh, the psalmist says in Psalm 103, awake my soul, like he's, he's calling his soul to reset through rejoicing. Awake my soul to praise God. In Hebrews, the writer talks about a sacrifice of praise. Sometimes it's costly. I think of uh, Matt Redman's brilliant song, which has held me in difficult times. Blessed be your name. And it has lines like, in the land that is plentiful, when I, uh, the world's all as it should be, blessed be your name. And you think, great, brilliant, yeah, pre-COVID. <laughs> but it also has these lines. When I'm found in the desert place, on the road marked with suffering, and when there's pain in the offering, still I will say, blessed be your name. Praise is powerful, awakes our soul, resets our perspective on our Father in heaven. So this week, may you find that space to worship more, to rejoice more, to write a list perhaps of all the things that you're thankful for, to put things right in their back, back in their right place to get the perspective sorted. See the power of praise. May throughout our week, as we rejoice to reset, may our hearts be aligned with the truth of our Father who's in heaven. Again, may we be moved to worship. May, may it be a permanent thing in our perspective now, whatever it is that we're facing, that before everything and in everything, those words echo and reset everything else. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name.